In this work, we investigate two important and open questions within the context of deformable object manipulation. These questions are, when should we trust a model? And what do we do if the robot is in a state where the model is unreliable? These questions arise because often the models we design or learn are inaccurate or simplistic. This is especially true for deformable objects, which have complex dynamics and many degrees of freedom. Consider a simple rope-like object being dragged on a surface with obstacles. Trying to learn a model that predicts the rope's movement in the presence of obstacles is difficult for current dynamics learning methods. Since these dynamics are difficult to learn, our proposed method instead only learns the unconstrained dynamics, for example, the dynamics of free space. Because this model only learns part of the dynamics, we must also learn when this model can be trusted. In order to plan with an unconstrained dynamics model, we learn a classifier, which tells us whether the predictions of our unconstrained dynamics model will be accurate. For example, this classifier should reject predictions that penetrate obstacles. This idea is formalized in what we call the model error requirement, and more details on this can be found in the paper. However, there are some cases where none of the predictions of our unconstrained dynamics will be accurate. For this case, we introduce recovery actions. Consider the case where the rope is draped on an object. Since our unconstrained dynamics model was trained without any obstacles, the predictions for various actions starting from the state are incorrect. Our learned classifier correctly detects this, and the planner is unable to find any actions which the classifier will accept. Therefore, we introduce recovery actions, whose purpose is to guide the robot back to regions of state space where the unconstrained dynamics are accurate. In this example, the recovery actions lift the rope until it finds an action which moves the ropes into free space, and from here planning resumes. In total, our method consists of two data collection phases followed by a learning phase. After this, our learned models are used in a closed loop process of planning, replanning, and recovery. First, we learn the unconstrained dynamics. This is done in an environment where the sources of physical constraints, such as obstacles, or the robot's arms are removed. This is because pulling the rope taut or self-collision between the robot's arms induce difficult dynamics that we want to avoid learning. We collect data with random actions and train a neural network using this data set. In phase two, we repeat this random data collection process, but in environments where the physical constraints are activated. We use this data to train our classifier and recovery models. We collect a limited data set here, as opposed to the large data sets that would be needed to accurately train a full dynamics model. Finally, we use the learned dynamics, classifier, and recovery in a closed loop of planning and recovery to perform various tasks. Here we show an example of our simulated rope dragging environment. Because the tail of the rope can only be accurately controlled by pulling motions, the planner finds a path that ends in a straight line pulling motion towards the goal. In this example, we show our simulated dual arm manipulation environment in a tabletop setting. Finally, we show how our method could be applied to real-world tasks. Here the robot needs to fetch the charging cable. It should bring the end of the cable near the phone. For this demonstration, we directly use the models learned in simulation to produce the trajectory which is executed by the robot. Here we show another example of the rope dragging task, this time with a rope. We also apply our dual arm manipulation models to several tasks done in an automotive setting. First, we show a robot moving a hose from one side to the other while avoiding collision or snagging on obstacles. Here, we demonstrate the task of preparing to install a hose for windshield wiper fluid by moving the grippers to their target positions without snagging. Finally, we demonstrate removing the lifting straps on a car engine that is being installed. 
This requires that the robot avoid snagging the straps on the engine or its arms while it removes them. In summary, we learn a classifier to determine where a model can be trusted, and we learn a recovery policy to take actions when we know the model is unreliable.